A lot of other marinas, just end up the length of it. Most other marinas don't have that length of a pontoon to stick visitors on. You know, we can we can stack that up. You know, three boats deep. Thirty, I've seen thirty odd boats sit on that, which is great. My name's Ryan Hack from Cag Fergus. Live about a mile away from the marina. So we're at Cag Fergus Marina and Harbour. My role is harbour master. First and foremost, the major role of a harbour master is the safety of all persons and vessels within the area. The role can go right down to repairing wooden boards that have broken in the marina, uh, right up to doing what I'm doing today, which is a report on a Category 1 aid to navigation and learn. The marina itself is about 300 berths, and the harbour is about a further 30. A bit smaller than Bangor Marina, a bit bigger than Belfast Marina, so we're kind of the, the in-between size marina in the Belfast Lock area. Comings and goings, they're all pleasure craft, leisure craft. Come and go as they please, busier on bank holidays and weekends busier in the evenings and vessels from anything from 6 metres up to probably in around 15 or 20 metres. We have a commercial training vessel, we have a commercial sightseeing vessel, occasionally we have the commercial towage vessels from McLaughlin Tugs, they would come in here to lay by uh, instead of Belfast or Lorne. At the moment for us it's the, uh, the Artemis vessels, the electric Hydrofoiling vessels from Belfast will be in here quite often. They come into the boatyard adjacent to us in the harbour for repair work. The final testing phase, I think, of their hydrofoiling workboat. Harbour police is always interesting when they come in. For the most part, it's the same boats day in, day out, uh, same berth holders. We unfortunately silt up, so the uh, marina will get shallower and shallower every year. And eventually we get hydrographic surveys done annually, and eventually we hit a, a trigger point where there's a risk of vessels running the ground. So for me as a harbour master, that's a, a danger to navigation and that triggers a dredging programme. We tend to actually try and predict that about three years in advance so we can start the application process for dredging licences and sending it out to tender. So there's a bit of guesswork or extrapolation, you know, trying to work out when we're going to need it done. It's about every five to seven years here. And the last dredging program, although it felt like it went on forever, it was about seven months in total from the first mobilisation till they left. They did Carnlock and Glenarm first, and then came down and did Carrick Fergus. And we're hoping we can get again between five and seven years before we have to have any dredging companies back in. The technical name they use for them are split hopper barges. They're held together hydraulically, and when they get out to sea to the dumping area, the, the whole barge splits in half and drops the uh, contents to the seabed. What's in them is silt, mud, whatever's dredged up. Before any dredge, we have to actually have divers in to check there's no large objects on the seabed that's gonna be picked up by the digger. And they, they traveled out somewhere between 10 and 15 nautical miles. They traveled from Carrick out to the spoil site and then dropped it. They have to drop it in an area of a certain depth with similar sea life characteristics to where it's coming from and with an area where the tide is stronger going out than coming in so we don't just move the problem from our marina over to uh, maybe Kevin over in Bangor. We would be best pleased if we filled up his marina with our mud. It'd be something similar to a dike or a, what they would sometimes call a race. I was here for the previous dredge before this one as well and they dropped it in the place called Ram Race so it's just an area of fast water so instead of it being deep it was just the current took most of it out to sea before it even reached the seabed. Thankfully, just the odd car tire or plenty of rope. That was a big fear of them getting caught either in the tugs that took the barges in and out, their propeller, or clogging up the bucket of the digger. So there's a lot of rope come out and wire rope and people's handrails off their boats, just 
all sorts of sort of odd things, suitcases, just very strange things you wouldn't expect to suddenly find in the bottom of a marina. It was an awful lot of stuff and every vessel in all of the harbours marinas had to at some point move from its berth to allow the area under it to be dredged and levelled. If you call each time we move a boat once as one movement, we did over a thousand boat movements over that time and that was done internally by us and the owners of the boat. So it was 60 to 70 hour weeks for seven months, which was not pleasant, but it's thankfully only once every five to seven years, not every every year. Good days and bad days. Some days are quite light and I get to go out and on our work boat and have a nice sightseeing type day looking at things or other days a longer slog with paperwork. So our work boat is really just for this area. It has been round as far as Browns Bay and Ballygally to drop marks for jet skiers, but that would be a very rare occasion. It would take perfect weather. You'd have to time the tide right because it's a, a slow work boat. For the most part, it spends its life in the marina and in the harbour.